If you're experiencing symptoms of the 2019 novel coronavirus, contact Telehealth Ontario at 1-866-797-0000 or your local public health unit. Please do not visit an assessment centre unless you have symptoms. Do not call 911 unless it is an emergency. Hi, I'm Dr. Brad Dibble from Pace Cardiology, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about the coronavirus. It's gotten a lot of attention in the press lately, and the World Health Organization has even declared it a pandemic, which means it's a global infection that everyone needs to be concerned about. You've probably heard that some heart patients are at greater risk about the coronavirus. It's not just heart patients, it's people with all sorts of chronic health issues like lung disease or compromised immune systems, and also the very young and the very old. So I want to give you some background information about this. For a lot of people, the coronavirus would be just like any other kind of cold or flu, where you might have a fever, cough, maybe some shortness of breath, aches and pains and some fatigue. And the very healthy are going to cope with it quite well. The problem is that those other groups I mentioned, including heart patients, are having a greater chance of having a bad outcome from it, including some people don't survive the infection. The reason for that is because when you are healthy, you've got reserve. Your body day to day can cope with the things it needs to do. And if asked to do something more, like fight an infection, it's got reserve. The heart can work harder, the lungs can work harder, the immune system can kick into high gear. But if you have a chronic health problem, like a heart disease or lung disease, then the problem is you don't have as much reserve. So when you get an infection like a coronavirus, you don't have the ability to ramp up as much as you can, as much as you should. Your heart will already be working harder than it, it normally would and doesn't have the room to increase. Likewise, the lungs and the immune system are all compromised. So that's why these groups matter when we don't want them being exposed to the coronavirus. The very young don't typically have completely developed immune systems, and the very old also have compromised immune function. So that's why they tend to be at risk, even if they don't have those other issues. The heart issues that I would care about are people who have any kind of weakened heart muscle or a heart that has to work harder because it's struggling with a valve problem, either a very leaky or a very tight valve, and people who have coronary artery disease, like those who have angina or have had previous heart attacks, or even bypass surgery or stents. The reason for that is because if you're fighting an infection like coronavirus, that can make the plaques in our arteries less stable and more prone to blocking off and causing a new heart event. Normally the coronavirus would behave, as I mentioned earlier, like any kind of a cold. If you have any of those symptoms, it's very important to be checked out for that. The best way to deal with the coronavirus is to prevent it altogether. So a lot of this is common sense stuff that grandma used to say, Wash your hands very regularly, ideally with things that are antiseptic. Also, make sure you keep all surfaces clean. Avoid touching your face because if you have the virus on your hand, you're less likely to get it if you keep it away from your mouth and your nose. And travel to certain parts of the world would not be considered so safe right now, and we're hearing about that on the news all the time. But there's even a greater step that's now being taken. The term we use is social distancing. The point there is we're trying to avoid a lot of people congregating in a small space for a short period of time. That's why you're hearing about conferences and tours being cancelled. That's why major league sports are suspending their seasons. And that's why we're trying to avoid people going to any place where there might be a lot of people. The point is that somebody there may be contagious and that minimizes how many people can be exposed if we all keep ourselves separated from those sorts of large groups. Even the schools now in Ontario are going to be closed an extra two weeks beyond March break for that very reason. If you do have a cough, it's important to make sure you do it properly by coughing into your elbow rather than your hand. And as I say, if you're sick, stay at home. And definitely, it's important for our cardiac, pulmonary, and other chronic health patients to avoid this at all costs. That's the only way we're going to fight this infection on a global scale.